We are here with our favorite guy, Professor <laughs> Pete, is back to share with us all things Orange County. We're going to talk COVID economics. We're going to talk what's going on around town. Pete, we haven't seen you in nearly a year. Oh, my goodness. Welcome back. Oh, thank you very much. I'll always love being on the show with you and Amy. It's a, it's a great show. And I think we could probably say that to a lot of people we know. I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> right. That's absolutely right. I cautiously say hopefully we're getting better. We're doing well as we record this. We're doing well in California as mm -hmm. far as our numbers, I think, are the lowest level they've been. So mm -hmm. hopefully that keeps going. I hope so, too. Well, it's it, as Lauren and I were reflecting on your annual report from last year, uh, it's nice to be able to talk with you this year, you know, after a full year has gone by and just get kind of, what are your perspectives on like, what's changed in Orange County in the past year? With well, COVID, sure. <laughs> COVID, you know. <laughs> it's what a difference a year makes. You know, I, I've covered business, covered Orange County, covered business for 30 years. And for about 15 of those, I had a show called the Chapman Business Report. I would do it with the two big economists at Chapman, Jim Doty and the late Essie Adibi. And every report, so all those years of all those reports, they would always start with, and we, a lot of times we do some forecasting, here's how things are now, but here's how what we expect over the next three months, six months, year, barring any extraneous event, and then they'd go on. And we had some things, there would be earthquake, you know, weather events, 9-11, but this whole year has been an extra, well, since March has been an extraneous event. So that's, of course, especially you know, when we talk the economy, when we talk everything, it's all COVID, right? When we had this conversation, Amy, Lauren, last year, Orange County as the nation was fairly hitting on all cylinders. We were actually a little lower than the state and the nation in job growth. Had some internal problems with the county, having difficulty attracting um, high paying uh, jobs and young people mm -hmm. as we've gotten so expensive, but we were relatively speaking, we we're still doing fine. Unemployment, I think was below 3%, all time mm -hmm. high in home prices, but now we're not doing fine. Neither is the country. Unemployment now in Orange County is close to 10%. It's better than it was March and April, a uh, little better than uh, the state, which I think is third is left almost 12 LA is higher, but home values, by the way, home values are unbelievable. They're That's up twelve percent. That's the biggest surprise to me. Why Absolutely. are home Everyone. values skyrocketing? Why are they sky? Is it because everyone's stuck at home? <laughs> well, that's a good. So we're doing this uh, interview uh, by Zoom. That's one reason is that so people it's the homebody economy. You need a bigger home. Mm -hmm. So people are trying to trade up and get bigger homes. Uh, one problem, though, is not that there's not that many homes on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and so there's a big demand. You know, you hear stories and I'm sure it's true. 40, 50 offers on a home and there's no not much home building. There's a yeah. fair amount actually going on, but not like we would normally see. I mean, I live on Balboa Island. It seems like there's home construction and that's an essential, you know, construction, thank God, is an essential service. So construction, especially infrastructure spending, which Orange County is benefiting from. We've all seen all the roadworks continued unabated, right? right? So, but that's the big reason is that there's a lack of supply. There is demand on the upper end and frankly that's what orange county mostly is the median price here is eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars one of the three or four highest places in the in the country and by the way eight hundred thousand means traditionally to qualify you have to make have income of about two hundred thousand mm -hmm. that's that's a pretty small band of people but mm -hmm. so the lack of supply and the fact that um you know on the upper end, people are still doing quite well, even many of them through COVID. Stock market still close to a record or many people have their uh, wealth. And of course, mortgage rates are at 3%. We've never seen, we have ever that's 3%. Another, yeah, that's another factor. It's interesting because Jeff and I, my husband and I were part of this group looking to say, you know what, we need another room. All of our college kids are coming home and we just like we're running out of space. And so we decided to try to, you know, look for another home. And in our area, 
there is an area that we were looking at. We didn't purchase a house here, but um, the record that six months ago, the home prices were between 1.3 and 1.5. And the home that we were like just observing that went to someone that we knew ended up selling for 2.25. It's almost that's, a million dollars more. No, that's, that's unheard of. That is unheard of that uh, you would get almost a million over ask. In six months. Unbelievable. I, it, 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 you know, we, we like kind of just, we kind of shook our heads and we're like, we're out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it absolutely speaks. It speaks to the limited supply, but I'll tell you what else it speaks to. And I, I bet you've heard this. Yes, we, we still have it facing when this COVID thing, we get, you know, we, we hopefully move largely past it. Vaccine therapy, um, you know, our systemic problems. We are having trouble getting those high, high what we call high value added, high paying jobs because we're we're high cost and our labor pool. You know, again, difficult to keep the people in their twenties and thirties net. They're leaving, but we are getting a lot of domestic migration to mm-hmm. Orange County low crime, still high quality of life. We're getting a lot from LA, quite frankly, yeah. and some other places. I have I have some friends, but real quick, live in Salt Lake City, thought it would be a good time. They're upper 20s, both former students working in TV news business, wanted to buy a home. They said, Pete, it they just keeps going away from us. Mm-hmm. Well, what's near Utah? It's places like Seattle and Portland, those cities where people are leaving. So Orange County is benefiting. Did, uh, have you heard this, Amy, when you were looking? We're benefiting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. When we were when we were looking, most of the people that um, were also looking in the area were from Northern California. Looking exactly. Mm-hmm. It, it's just become very, you know, the big homeless issue there. Uh, if it, real estate's expensive here, well, it's, you know, it has been, but it, it could be in for a hit because of the problems there. Mm-hmm. So we are benefiting uh, from that. But for those seeking a home like you, I guess it wasn't. You're out. Out of curiosity, out of curiosity, what does eight hundred thousand get you? I remember when I was living in Manhattan, we would say everything starts at a million, and then it's another half million per bedroom. Mm-hmm. So eight hundred thousand. So eight thousand get you in Orange County. It's the median priced home, and that's the resale. I don't think a new home is probably about the same amount. 2,000, 2,200 square feet, maybe 25, 25 mm-hmm. three bedrooms. Uh, that's mm-hmm. what it gets you. Um, mm-hmm. Not not much more. And of course, it all depends closer to the water. It's not even going to get you that. Sure. Uh, but not in other places, it might get you a little more. But that's it. Yeah. It's not that much. That's, right. That's and, hard, but if people are looking, I totally get it. Look, I live here on the East Coast and I, I want to come home. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come back. I totally understand why people want to live there. I'm right there with you. And, and in addition to the uh, the safety factor, of course, our great weather, great quality, as they say, the lifestyle index. And schools are a big part of that. Irvine, you know, always gets a lot of mention. Now, that's becoming a little interesting. Again, we assume things will return to normal, but uh, it's really varying district by district. And a, a place that has at least settled on a plan and it's getting students back to school. And again, Irvine would be one of those places as we record this. Well, the, the home values will reflect that. Some places are not. I live in Newport Beach. They're not going back to school till January as it stands now. That's interesting. So I'm in, in San Clemente in South Orange County and um, the kids have gone back to school part time. So everyone's on Zoom and they're doing regular classes on Zoom. But then my um, my elementary school girl, she's every day in school now, and which is crazy awesome. And then my um, my junior high girls are in halftime. So they'll do like- Hybrid. Yeah, hi, they're a hybrid model. So Monday it's on um, Zoom, Tuesday it's home study, Wednesday in class, Thursday home study, Friday in class. So, and what's wonderful about these kids is that they're learning how to adapt very early on to changing technology and changing times. And I have to say that I've been very impressed with the Capo Unified School District. I was 
very worried going into it and looking at other options and looking at private schools. And I'm very glad that I stayed with the public school system. And I think that they have done a wonderful job. And I think that um, the teachers genuinely really care about the kids and they really have gone over and above all summer long to make their return to fall something that was worth going back to. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. You nailed it, Amy. The, the people, smart people and, and companies and folks who run companies, they look at, uh, of course, they look at the school system and look at the, uh, the hospitals and the, uh, they, they look at because they want their people, if say they want to move or they want to grow their company, they want their people to stay with them and move with them. And they look at the functionality, if you will, uh, you know, they look at the culture of a school district and if they can't get their act together, you know, that of course that will affect the quality of the education. They, communities that show that they can uh, operate in the, you know, in the best interest obviously of, of, the, of their constituents, that yields benefits. And if it's the opposite, that's a real, real easy way to, to say, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna look elsewhere. If you, can't get, if you can't get your act to get, we're paying all these taxes, which we do. We, we all know how high tax California, um, Southern California is. Well, that's big. A lot of it's going toward, uh, say, ed, ed, the, and the benefit should at least be that they work together and, and you know, come, like you said, they came up with tough times, but you can come up with a plan that all agree on. And, you know, in some parts, I, I can tell you in, in the Newport Mesa, not to, but it's a uh, school district, they haven't. And there's a lot of acrimony. And yeah, it's very interesting. And it's interesting to see how different cities have fared differently just from talking with you. You know, your your experience in Newport is very different from my experience in San Clemente and, and everywhere in between. So, uh, but I agree with you. Overall, I feel like, you know, People are kind. They are looking to help each other. They are. I remember some of the earlier days when there was the toilet paper shortage. Um, <laughs> my neighbors uh, said, "Hey, let's let's do a scavenger hunt. We're going to do a, a virtual scavenger hunt, and we are going to see what we have in our homes. And we're going to have. It's going to be like a fun game. And one of the questions was, "How much toilet paper do you have?" <laughs> <laughs> You get five. You get five. Five points if you have the most toilet paper. So me being like, no, you're hoarding. That yeah. means you're hoarding. I'm like, I won the toilet paper game. I, I <laughs> talked up. And then after that, I got like five messages going, so and so's out. So and so's out. I'm like, I'm in, guys. I'm in. And I go drop off the toilet paper after. So it was. Uh, but it is fun to see how everyone is, you know, like pulling together most of the time. And there's a lot of. You know, acrimony, like you said, in the media. Um, but I think overall, I, what I have seen from people is kindness and really goodwill in Orange County. I think on a local, on a local level, on a neighborhood level, mm -hmm. people are really working together. I know here we're, we're planning a uh, pumpkin decorating day. Oh, so every fun. family will bring, we live on a dead end and every family mm -hmm. will bring their own table and chairs and their own supplies and pumpkins. But the whole neighborhood is gonna turn out to decorate awesome. together, which fun is just really fun. And they wouldn't have done it otherwise, mm -hmm. right? In non-COVID days, everybody would be really busy and they would see each other on Halloween. But now they're looking for ways to really pull together and create new opportunities to be together uh, in a safe and and healthy way. So that's a great point. Like that watch. hyper hyper localization is more important now than ever just yeah, in your individual know. neighborhoods i i love that thought that's really you can't possibly survive this alone i mean amy come on you had all that toilet paper did you share with your neighbors <laughs> <laughs> I did not think, thank you i did that was my uh, at least i can say that i did share you know all the time mm -hmm. at home I, I, I think maybe people have learned or relearned or even been educated the importance for instance of our local businesses mm -hmm. and Last night, I was uh, driving home here in, in Newport Beach. It's a Wednesday night. Uh, every restaurant is packed. Now, it, it's famous for its restaurants, and people have the wherewithal here. But still, I don't think on a typical way, I, people realize, and these, you know, look, the, how many businesses have gone out during this time, and they want to, all else being equal, they want to do the right thing. And 
and like just we've just been saying, support each other. And what better yeah. way to do that? Your local stores, markets, restaurants. Yeah, I love that. So there are a couple of silver linings that I've seen. Um, one of them, uh, some ladies were talking about it the other night, saying, you know, this is forcing us to have a class size of 20 to 1. And I'm like, <laughs> that's true, silver lining, you know. And then the other one was, isn't it fun to eat outdoors? Isn't it fun, these outdoors yes. restaurant areas now that they have and they've blocked off streets and you walk in and it's created a new environment and that's, that's really welcoming and warm and I love that too. And I My hope God, you actually run into people. <laughs> yeah. I hope those are things that will remain afterwards. Mm -hmm. I hope so too. I, I feel like that there has been, like everyone talks about digital transformation, but I think that there has been some transformation culturally like in a, our previous segment, we were talking about not blowing on people's birthday cakes anymore. That may end. We, we may not do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or just, just traditional handshakes, right? Or, or right. hugs or, right. or, or kisses. Well, I have a question for you. Will we be doing this? So the next annual roundup on the economy and politics, will we be doing it this way? Or will we be, I'll be at your your nice studios there. In the, we in the hope hills. that we'll be right at the studio because I hope so. No, there's no substitution for being in person. No. Well, we're close, but I, I did a show. Uh, I did a show. I don't think I'm I just, so I, I my class we had on Dateline producers and also uh, Josh Mankowitz, one of the hosts, uh, the other night. And of course, they're doing, they're just getting going, creating new shows, but doing al almost everything by Zoom. And they travel a lot. And so that's, and who's traveling now? And that's a big saving and it's pre precarious. And, and Josh and the producer are saying that going forward, we think there's going to be a mix, but it probably won't go back. But, right. you know, here we could, but some things will absolutely. Tough, one of the hardest hit, no doubt, the travel industry, yeah. and it, that's going to be that's going to change um, going forward. I think for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I'm not excited to start traveling like I like I did. Right. Yeah, I have a friend who's a pilot at Delta, and internally they uh, they said they think it's a three year recovery. Yes, mm -hmm. I uh, that that would sound about right. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. And they're going to have to do things differently going forward also, you know, again, I, to what degree will we evolve into new behaviors that, that are really positive and that can last and, mm -hmm. and will they rethink how they uh, do some of their business to make it more palatable for the traveler? Mm -hmm. I think it's time you know, we boomeranged in one direction where airlines were so anti-traveler. <laughs> I mean, it seems ridiculous, but everything went against the traveler. It, it, it made travel just so hard. Yeah. And some of them started to, you know, come back to center. But I think at this point, everybody's going to recognize that people want and need to travel. But there has to be some kind of a midpoint where everybody can feel comfortable doing it. A few shows ago, we had someone on talking about opening safely, mm -hmm. right? about COVID smart, about, you know, a company that shows me that they're taking all the precautions are the ones that are going to attract me sooner mm -hmm. and then ones that are not. So we look for that kind of thing. And, and I think it's opened our eyes to different practices, right? Didn't we have also on a previous segment, we talked about taking our own little laser guns to disinfect the hotel room. Yeah. Well, and I think that the biggest thing that I have seen is the importance of personalization now, because now every employer is concerned about the individual and what they feel comfortable doing and whether and I think that is such a positive change where they're real the focus really is on the employee and making sure that they feel comfortable going back and not requiring a situation where they feel uncomfortable to me that's a, a really positive step in in the workforce flexibility and hybrid we'll see Pete we'll check back with you a year from now and we'll see how it goes hopefully I, we'll before then let, let's hope it looks more like the prior year than this one, only because, and I love both of you, and thank you for the show. It's, it's terrific. Likewise. Orange County is so well served. We're, we've always been, as we both all know, underserved uh, in terms of news, in terms of television news, and you have this great show. But that being said, let's hope we're all in the same studio. And there's nothing to rule out, by the way, another dog show, Lauren. 
Melania is ready. I'm all in. Libby's ready. <laughs> I know Melania just got her hair cut. Everybody's ready. They're staying. They're staying hyper ready for the next dog show. <laughs> I know Amy had a great time. <laughs> I did have a great time. I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> fun, fun day. We'll look forward to seeing you again. You stay healthy. You bet. You guys too. Uh, have a, a happy New Year, and uh, see you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.